Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to another video for Playwright with c .net video series. And in this video, we're going to talk about new locator strategy in Playwright, a complete continuation of our earlier video that we were discussing about the same concept. So if you remember in our last video, while we were discussing about this new locator strategy, which was introduced in Playwright with Aria, where we can use the get by role method to perform the Aria role link something like that so we could able to use all these operation uh, and also we could identify all the elements something like this and we are going to understand this strategy or the locator strategy even further with some of the complex ui instead of using this very very simple ui that you are seeing with our ea app so in order to demonstrate this i'm going to uh, go to our uh, location of our application which is over here and then i'm going to do a PowerShell PS1 and I'm going to this time generate the code for our executeautomation.com website because it is a bit complex than the actual demo site that we just saw the eaapp.swami.com website because that is uh, naturally a very very simple website the asp.net so as you can see this website is at least built using the react and it is a single web page application and a lot of students are already enrolling into this particular website so which is great but now we are going to test this application and see how we could able to identify the controls using the new locator strategy of playwright and as you can see if i just hover over here it is already showing me all the different locators along with the area role like link if it is a link and if it is a button control then it is a button control and if it is a list item then it's also showing a list item and similarly if it is going to be a text box if it has got a placeholder text then it's also showing me the placeholder text there so let's say i'm going to do a simple sign in process and you can see by get holder place id it is automatically taking me the uh, placeholder like email address and the password which the text is like visible text which is available but i'm going to do a sign up this time and over here on the sign up i'm just going to choose let's say demo user just for my differentiation purpose uh, and i'm going to use the country as new zealand and i'm going to choose the password uh, email as demo user at demo.com and for the password i'm going to choose p-a-s-s-w-o-r-d and p-a-s-s-w-o-r-d and i'm going to be a tester for my life and i'm going to hit this create account button and you can see that for the button it is already detecting that it is a button type and even for these kinds of avatar it's actually locating me like it's an area role of image so almost for all the different kinds of uh, controls it is already identifying what types it is and it is also writing the whole code for us over here which is great and i'm gonna do a create account over here so that is gonna generate the account for me and it is not going to basically sign in because we have just created the account we have to again verify the account unless until we verify that the exit automation portal is not going to allow you to uh, use certain feature of the application but as of now you can see that we have logged in which is great so you can see that we have a place verify account within seven days of this link will be sent to an email which is great and now i'm going to go to the home page of the application and let's assume that i am trying to enroll in one of the uh one of the path for example uh yeah maybe this cordless automation uh and i'm going to enroll for let's say the catalon studio and i'm going to hit watch and you can see that the first video is going to start playing but i'm going to go to the second video and you can see that it's going to help ask me that please verify your account i'm going to hit close and that's it that's my full workflow so i have recorded it so now this website is not uh quite straightforward right there are not a lot of locators available but you can see that the code generation is already quite awesome which is generated by the playwright uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this whole code and i'm going to go over here and i'm going to write a test and i'm going to say public async task of locator uh, test for ea uh, and let's 
paste this code that we just copied and let's understand this code a bit so as you can see over here the first point is that it's going to be navigating to uh, the browser and it's going to open the zero automation website which is all great and then we clicked the link uh, sign in and you can see that the area role is basically a link and then we click the sign up button and again the area role is basically a sign up and the most important thing to understand this here is that all these operations that we are doing here the whole waiting mechanism still apply over here just the auto waiting mechanism of playwright is automatically applicable over here which means it is going to wait until the page fully loads and the timeout of 30 seconds is still applicable for each and every operation that we are trying to perform here so the 30 second is a default waiting mechanism so that is already happening here well as i said you can see here we're trying to perform a get plus placeholder uh, for the first name so i'm going to get rid of that and similarly removing the tab that we are trying to do clicks that we are doing and you can see that this can remain and i can remove this email uh, which is the click operation and then the password email click operation and then it is going to do this and you can notice that for the uh, text that I'm trying to fill in it is also putting a exact is equal to true like the exact value that I need to fill in so that is also automatically been created for us which is great so I'm going to get rid of the other stuff over here so I'm not going to explain about the get placeholder or the get by text because it's already something we already covered and then I'm going to click this create account button and I don't know why this waiting for this go to async here I think those things are completely not required so I'm going to get rid of them as well um, and we click the home uh, header link there. And that's the reason why it's coming. And now you notice that for few of them, which is lo uh, located here, the locator is actually not using the roles or the placeholder or the text. It is using the raw locator that we were using all these days before. I mean, it is not using the, the actual locator, using the area role. Rather, it is trying to use the locator something like this because the actual locator in the application is not really something you can identify using any of the area role like button or image or whatever it is. So there is no way that you can identify this control. And that's the reason why it is identifying using the nth child of two or nth child of three or if there is any specific locator that it can find, it is the playwright is very, very intelligent enough to put that value over there for us. So. Yeah, that is how this whole recorder is already doing a lot of magical stuff for us over there. Uh, and you can see that now it is also identifying uh, the particular control over here. You can see like whole thing, but I can probably um, even use the, the star there so that you don't have to enter the whole thing. Pretty much like how we did in our earlier uh, lecture. We just use the, oh, we don't even have to use asterisk. We can just, just uh, shorten that particular value there and also record and playback I can shorten this as well cool and I can hit the close button so let's see if I could able to do this again uh, but the only thing which I wanted to do is I wanted to change the demo username uh, with demo user one and this email because our system is going to detect that it's a duplicate uh, user so I'm gonna run this and see what is gonna basically happen so you can see that this time it is going to do exactly the same operation that we tried doing. There we go. It is like, how many seconds? I don't know. It's like six seconds and it has executed the whole operation for us, which is wicked fast. And yeah, the, the whole locator that we tried doing is actually working for us without any problem. And the most important thing to understand over here is now these locators are starting to become even more readable for us because now we don't have this complex XPath or CSS, which is very much understood only by the person who can really get into the code and write it. These locators are now readable locators than verbose locators that we always use with a dot CSS class or dot XPath, because now all these locators are even more readable, pretty much like the text, like what we actually see on the screen. So now we are an inch closer to pretty much mimic as if like we are testing an application which has got these text, like we're identifying the elements using the text here. But the next application that which I'm gonna show you is not this application, but I wanted to make it even more complex, like the actual real-time scenario kind of application, which we will probably using. 
which is this application, the EA application that I have built for my other courses, you know, which is available in Udemy. So you can see here, this application has got a very, very simple UI. You can see it has the, uh, the name, description, and the number of the uh, product which you want to choose. And then you can choose the product type and stuff. I mean, this looks pretty simple, right? Like this is not a very complex application either. Uh, but let's see what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna say PWSH and for the code gen, I'm gonna use this particular UI. So there we go. It has brought up this application over here. Uh, the most important point to understand here is see the locators there. It is get by label as name, uh, get by label as description, get by role as area role of spin button, and then get by role as area uh, role dot combo new where name is product type which is all looking quite interesting and almost pretty simple right so they don't seems to be any uh, difficult to identify things uh, by playwright much much easier awesome and the same thing goes for our uh, automation tester without having even this roles we can identify using their name or id something like that but i wanted to make this application a bit more complex i mean i'm not really going to use this code rather I'm actually going to make this code a bit more complex, but I'll show you what I really mean about that. So now if I try to refresh this application over here, let's assume that our application is dynamically generating the same kind of element if I click the create button, for example. I mean, just hypothetically, right? If I click the create button, it generates the same kind of form second time. And if I click the second, uh, the click create button here, it generates the same form third time, something like that. So in here, you can see that the locators looks quite same, but as you can see here, the locator is now telling me that there is a name is equal to form of one uh, to perform an operation of click on this particular spin button, right? And let's, if I go to this particular name here, the name of this particular text box is pretty much exactly the same for here as well. You can see the locator is hash name, but it is actually identifying using the name is equal to form two. So this is name is equal to form one, and this is name is equal to form two here. And this is name is equal to form two as well for description and for the spin button and for the uh, product type actually over here. So everything looks pretty much exactly the same operation. The most important thing to understand here is the area role is already trying to differentiate between both of them. So let's assume how we actually do this operation in our classical uh, identification mechanism. So this is, let's say, if this is going to be your case, you are going to be doing this automation. What you'll be doing, uh, you'll be probably using uh, what is called as an uh, a name, for example. So let's say I'm going to be selecting using the CSS selector, uh, and you're going to be using, I think it's capital N over here. And as you can see, we have a name of name in two controls here. And similarly, if I want to select the description, then I can just see description. And if I hit enter, you can see that there are two description of same uh, name, which is a CSS name. So this is the ID really, right? So if I want to choose this ID there uh, with the same name, what I should be doing essentially is I need to locate this particular form which is its parent form, uh, and then I need to identify that. So you can see this particular name actually has got a form with a role as form, and there is a area label is equal to form one. So basically I need to, first of all, choose the parent as area label is form one, and then I need to navigate to this child control to identify this particular control, which is the input text box control using its ID or the name. Right, so this is what I do, and that is exactly what this particular locator is also doing, but in a very, very, very readable fashion. And that is the power of this area role in Playwright, where it identifies the control in more meaningful and fluid fashion. And that is the power of area role, I think, and which is something we have been struggling with automation testing for quite long, like having introduced with Selenium and having exposed with tools like Cypress and uh, other tools, this way of locators helps us to get a bit inch closer 
to have a readable locators in place and this is quite awesome as well well as that said let's see how this particular code looks like really so let this application be up and running so i'm going to write a method here i'm going to say public uh, sorry test and i'm going to say public async locator for yeah somehow this tab 9 is writing things for me uh, and i'm going to copy paste some of the code which i have already uh, written and over here as you can see what i'm trying to do is i'm navigating to this particular application which is the create and the most important thing that i have did over here is this one so as you can see it has the get by role of area role of form and then I'm identifying the form using the form name one. Similarly, form two, I'm identifying using the name of form two. And I'm using this parent locator to identify the name, description, spin button, and the product type with form one over here. And similarly, the form two, I'm identifying using the form two as the parent, and then the locator is something like this. But most important thing you may ask is for form one, I have used get by label, but why did I use form two with locators? This is an open question which I do have as well, because if I try using get by label there, it is not working. And I think it's a bug or it may be a future enhancement which the team are gonna be uh, working on. Because if I try to uh, chain uh, the same name in this particular form too, it is really not working. So if you know the uh, reason why this is not working, please put on the comments of this particular video. It will be very helpful, but I have no idea why this is not really working. But as you can see, uh, this is how you can identify the uh, locator of the form two because this name is almost the same name, right? So uh, it's name, uh, the locator of ID of the a name and the id of the description for this uh, text box and then the spinner uh, and then the select option so now you can see that this code looks more legal as well so i can just say uh, keyboard uh, it's going to be a gaming keyboard and i'm going to stay with this and let's try to debug this code and see how this is going to even look like so i'm going to put a breakpoint there and if i try to debug this code and you will notice that it has typed all these values there instantly for us without any problem. So if your UI is getting complex like these and these, you can see that this particular readable locators using the area in Playwright is actually working as expected as well. Well, as that said, the code that we have been writing using the page object model over here is more readable comparatively because we don't really have like text is equal to imply like something like that we could replace all these things using get by label to have the employee text there because it is the actual readable text there right so get by label should just do that instead of you having something like these kind of verbose location there and the locators are very readable as well so that's it guys this is how we could able to make use of the area locators in the playwright which makes things more and more sophisticated and more readable for the locators than compared to our existing verbose css or xpath locator because these new locators are quite readable and maintainable as well